Well, hello, and thank you for downloading this free module on note reading. I hope you'll find this free module helpful in all of your musical endeavors. Whether you're a beginning student or whether you have taken lessons for years, if you're struggling with note reading, I'm here to help you. I'll help you become more comfortable with note reading by going through some strategies that will help you become a better note reader, whatever your level of note reading may be. We'll begin by looking briefly at the history of written music. We'll spend some time demystifying the grand staff, and we will examine the two most popular clefs, the treble clef and the bass clef. We'll also learn some strategies for naming notes. Our first strategy will be landmarks and logic, the two L's. And our second strategy will be patterns. The grand staff is how our music is written today. The grand staff has a treble clef, a bass clef, and is spaced between these two clefs. The treble clef has five lines and the bass clef has five lines, and that space between the two clefs is reserved for middle C. Remember, in the musical alphabet we only use the letters from A to G. While the grand staff may look intimidating, by the time you finish going through this module, it will make perfect sense to you. It's all very logical. We'll look at the slide again later at the end of this module. When we return to this slide, you'll be very happy at how much you've learned. Let's just see how the notes on the grand staff relate to the notes on the keyboard. When you move up from a space to a line on the grand staff, you move up a key on the keyboard. If you move from a line to a space, you would also move up a key on the keyboard. The first note in the bass clef is C in space number two. Here it is on the keyboard. The second note is on line three, which is one note higher on the keyboard and is the note D. Our next note is one step higher in a space. That also means it's one step higher on the keyboard and that note is E. It's all very logical. If you go up from a space to a space or a line to a line, then you'll be skipping a name. The last note we identified was E. If we were to go from E, which is on the third space, to the fourth space, then that note would be G we would need to skip the line where F is located. When you have your landmarks, you'll be able to count up and down from the landmarks to find the names of the notes. As I said before, music is an oral tradition, so originally music was not written down. Over the years, music was learned by hearing music that was played or sung by others. The earliest form of music notation was discovered in Iraq and it goes back to 2000 BC. Although only fragments exist from this early manuscript, the melody was definitely notated. In order for you to appreciate how much easier note reading is today, here we have some examples of early notation. This example is from ancient Greece and dates from the second century BC. This was written in stone as a tablet, which of course has faded over the last 2000 years. We are now going to jump ahead and look at a sample of Gregorian chant. Pope Gregory I, who was the Bishop of Rome from 590 to 604, ordered the simplification and cataloging of music assigned to specific celebrations in the church calendar. This music is really the first system that was notated in a way that starts to resemble modern musical notation. In general, these were learned by following the given example orally which took many years to learn. Here we see an early example of Gregorian chant. You'll notice there's marks and squiggles above the words. This would help the singer have an idea of what the pitches should be. Remember though that this tradition was passed down orally. These early manuscripts were more a memory aid. Here we see the evolution of notation with Gregorian chant. The symbols to show pitch and duration were called neumes. Notice that we have four lines, which is a vast improvement from our previous slide. 
While this really helps the performer to perform more accurately, this method still relied a great deal on the oral tradition. Here we have the great or grand staff. This is very difficult to read because there are 11 lines. Because the great staff was so difficult to read, the middle line was removed. That's why when we write middle C, we always add a line or a ledger line. That was originally a solid line in the first grand staff. Originally, the treble clef was written as a G. See how the original G clef changed through the years, which you can still recognize the modern treble clef from these early examples. Because the treble clef was originally a G, one of the major note reading landmarks is line G. See where the treble clef circles and outlines that line? Two other landmarks in the treble clef are of course middle C which is here and G which is at the top of the staff. These are your three major landmarks in the treble clef. Because there are so many notes for, from our landmark G to G and middle C that it is also helpful if you know that the third space is also C. From any of these landmarks when you go up or down a step from a line to a space or a space to a line you'll also go up or down one letter name. While I highly recommend using landmarks and patterns for note reading here I'm showing you the names of all the lines and spaces in the treble clef. The line notes are the old familiar saying, every good bird does fly, or EGBDF, and the space notes spell the word face. The challenge when you use this way of reading is that it's very difficult to become a fluid reader. It's very similar to sounding out each letter of a word. Again, landmarks and patterns will lead to a more fluid reading. We'll be spending a great deal of time on patterns a little later in this module. My goal is for you to understand the tools necessary to become good note readers. This slide shows you the evolution of the bass clef. The bass clef is often called the F clef because it was originally written as the letter F. On this slide again you can see the evolution of the F clef to the bass clef. Of course, the F line is easy to find in the bass clef. The F line is between the two dots that outline the fourth line. Remember, we always count our lines and our spaces from the bottom to the top. Middle C is easy to find. Remember, it has a line through it. In space number two, we also have a C. Here we have all the notes in the bass clef. Again, I strongly recommend you use landmarks and patterns to become a fluid note reader. The five lines in the bass clef are G, B, D, F, and A. You can say great big dogs fight animals or good boys deserve fun always. And the spaces are A, C, E, G. All cars eat gas. As I've said a number of times, using landmarks is still the best for naming notes. Let's just review the landmarks that we have covered. Let's begin with the treble clef. The first and most important landmark in the treble clef is G. Notice how the treble clef outlines that G line. The treble clef is also as high as that top G note. That makes these two G's very easy landmarks. Because there's space between the treble clef and the bass clef, middle C can be written in the treble clef or the bass clef, depending on if middle C is close to the treble clef or to the bass clef. And why not just memorize that space number three is C? Let's look at the bass clef landmarks. F is easy because the two dots on the bass clef are above and below the F line. In addition to middle C, space 2 is also a C and is a landmark. 
Practice finding these landmarks in your music. It's best to be able to identify these notes instantly, and from these notes you can find all the other notes rather quickly. Music is made up of many patterns, and the good note readers always recognize, identify, and play their music using patterns. At the beginning, it's often helpful to actually circle the various patterns in your music. After a while, you'll be able to spot these patterns without having to circle them in advance. We'll go through each of these patterns so that you can understand how things look in your music. And then, after we have learned all of these patterns, we'll take some real music and identify the patterns as a way to make it easier to play. Our first pattern is standing still. It's the easiest to identify and of course it means that it is the same note three times in a row. It can often be more than three times. When you first look at your music, it helps if you can see those repeated notes and gather them together and see them as one idea or one thought. Here we see a standing still pattern on a line. It could easily as well have been written in spaces. It's simply a repeated note. And as I said before, the note can be repeated three, four, five, as many times as the composer wishes. Our next pattern is stepping up. On this slide, we have space, line, space, but of course it could be line, space, line. The stepping up pattern is simply going up one note name at a time. And that also means you're going to be going up one key on your piano or keyboard. For example, A, B, C, or B, C, D, or D, E, F. These are all examples of stepping up. Of course, you may have four notes stepping up. What I want you to realize is that when you go from a space to the next line or from the next space, you're moving up by one note name and one key. So when you're looking at your music, once you found that first note, then it's easy to play that stepping up pattern, providing you've chunked that information together as one idea. Here we have a pattern stepping up so high. It's really the same as stepping up, it just has more notes. Of course, these patterns can begin on any note on the grand staff, the challenge is for you to find those patterns before you start to play. Again, you could have more notes than just these five notes. But by chunking your stepping up patterns as far as you can, and seeing them as one idea, will reflect that by sounding much smoother. Here we see a stepping down pattern. It's the opposite of stepping up. Instead of going up, you're going down. By being able to read your notes descending, note reading will become much easier. A fun activity is to practice your musical alphabet backwards from G to A. G, F, E, D, C, B, A. On this slide, the stepping down pattern is written space, line, space. Of course, it could be written line, space, line. Stepping down so low is just a continuation of stepping down. When you can find this pattern in your music, you're able to see it as one idea instead of many individual notes. This really isn't a new pattern. It's just combining stepping up and stepping down. I call this stepping up and down. We'll see if you can find some examples of this in the music later on in this module. Here we have stepping down and up. This really isn't new, however it will help you know when you see this in your piece. This example doesn't move by step. Often it jumps, and often when it jumps, it jumps one note. The jump up high pattern will be line, 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 or space, space, space. Always remember to skip a note name and a key when playing this pattern. You knew we'd have this pattern, didn't you? It's the opposite of jump up high, it's jump down low. 
And again, it can be line, 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 or space, space, space. And you're going to be skipping a note name and also a key on the keyboard. Now let's see if we can use our landmarks and patterns to analyze Camptown races. This begins on landmark G with a standing still pattern. Next we have a jump down and up from G to E and back to G. See how easy it can be when you follow the pattern? Here we have a step up and down, then jump, repeat, step down, step up, step down. When we look at the second phrase, it's almost a direct repetition of the first phrase. For the course, we're beginning on landmark C, then it's a jump up high pattern, C, E, G, and then a whole note on our landmark C. By counting up one note from landmark G, this section begins on A. We have the jump up to C, jump down to A, and step to G. Now let's look at the last line. It begins on landmark G, jumps down to E, then back to G. Next we step up to A, step down to G, then jump to E. In the next measure we step down to D, jump up to F, step down to E, and we end with a stepping down pattern. Let's look at the bass clef here and see what patterns and landmarks we can use to understand the music. It begins with one of our landmarks, F. The next note is F and that's played an octave lower. We have a stepping pattern here, followed by three more stepping up patterns. Doesn't that make it easy to play when you see those patterns? Here we have a jump from F to A, then a step to G. Middle C is one of our landmarks, which makes that very easy. Middle C is followed by another landmark, base C. We then have a step up to D, a step down to B, a step up to C, and that last note is C. Doesn't the grand staff make a whole lot more sense now once you know your landmarks? and the direction of the keys. So let's just take a quick look again at our grand staff. Here we have our landmarks and we can see how it relates to the keyboard. I'm sure when you look at it now it looks much easier than it did earlier on in this module. To summarize what really works for reading music is to use your landmarks and patterns. It often helps if you circle your patterns and any notes that need more attention directly into your score. Becoming a good note reader is really not a talent, it's a skill. That means that you can improve every day by reading a little bit of music. I know you can do this, and if you need more help, just let me know. I'm here to help you every step of the way. With this module, you'll receive some note reading exercises. Please complete the exercises and send them to me. I'd be happy to mark them for you and see if I can help you further. You can also log on to our free theory club where you can ask me more questions. I'm here to help you every step of the way. Thank you for taking the time to watch this module. I really hope you'll also take the time to do the assignment. I look forward to marking your papers. Thank you, and have a super duper week. Bye now.